Episode 2, the Second Italo-Ethiopian War. Mussolini's father was a blacksmith. Mussolini grew to become the leader of Italy's fascist party and became the El Duce of Italy. One of his ambitions was to reclaim lands which he believes rightfully belonged to Italy after World War I. One of them was Abyssinia, or modern-day Ethiopia, right next door to Italian Somaliland and below Italian Eritrea. Now, I'm very sure you're all wondering, why would Italy, a country proud of its Roman roots, choose to conquer a weak and poor nation like Ethiopia? Isn't Ethiopia just full of mud huts and barren plains? Well, the world at the time was still suffering from the effects of the Great Depression. Businesses closed down, people were jobless and hungry. By taking Ethiopia, Italy would have land where they could build roads, railways, factories, and houses. To do this, they would need workers, which means jobs, and people can start bringing food to the table again in their houses. This would greatly affect Italy's economy. Ethiopia also has natural resources like gold, gas, copper, platinum, etc. These can be traded and would increase Italy's economic growth even more. Ethiopia's army has no machine guns, no tanks. Its air force has a small number of outdated fighter planes. It should be a sure win for the Italians. On the 5th of December, 1934, gunshots were fired at Wall Wall. It is unclear who fired first, but the skirmish started. An Italian fort was under attack for two days. This resulted in a combined 200 deaths. Mussolini used this as an excuse to declare war on Ethiopia and moved his army almost immediately. Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie realized that his country was no match. He pleaded for help to the League of Nations. Several countries half-heartedly stopped trading with Italy as a show of support, but they hesitated because they saw Italians as a potential ally against the rising Nazi Germany. France and Britain secretly tried to broker a deal to give away two-thirds of Ethiopia to Italy to avoid the war. The scandal was leaked to the public, resulting in top-ranking officials to be removed from their posts. Haile Selassie and the people of Ethiopia were alone. It was a nasty fight. War crimes were committed by both sides. The Italians used mustard gas and attacked hospitals and ambulances bearing the Red Cross while the Ethiopians used dum-dum bullets that expanded on impact, making wounds larger and therefore harder to heal. All able-bodied Ethiopians were called to the war. Those found at home after the mobilization were ordered to hang for their cowardice. Their gallant efforts, supported with the rough terrains of the land, stretched this war to last for two years. Eventually, on the 19th of February, 1937, Ethiopia surrendered. Italian East Africa was created, and another country had fallen to the invader. Haile Selassie fled to the UK and remained in asylum until 1942, when Ethiopia was liberated. Thank you viewers for watching this video. Click that like button and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you.